Welcome to video two of chapter 10. And we will look at the topic of temperament. So we can define temperament as the general emotional style an individual displays in responding to events. So it's like your, you know, your characteristic um, mood, basically, um, you know, a, that, that you regularly display and um, this uh, this topic really you know um, came to became much more important after um, some groundbreaking research work by by Chess and Thomas um, it was they did the first major study that really took a good look at, at temperament as a variable. It was um, known as the New York Longitudinal Study. So remember, it's longitudinal. That means that they they followed uh, their subjects over the span of years, and in in fact, I mean, they started with with infants, and and they they watch them until adulthood. So this this spanned, you know, this study actually spanned decades. Uh, it was published in 1977. Um, so that really kind of began more research on on temperament um, that major this major study. In their their model, they they looked at nine characteristics that they believed contribute to a child's temperament. So they're listed here. Um, so they, they once again, I, as I said, they started with um, with infants or, or, or toddlers in the study and in, um, actually infants in the study and um, they initially, you know, rated them on these, on these nine characteristics and then they came up with three different temperament profiles that, that many subjects, you know, fell into um, these, these different profiles or categories. Uh, the first was, was the easy temperament and children, children with an easy temperament have a positive mood. Uh, they show easy adaptation to change. Um, so they're not like, you know, completely thrown just because something's new in their in their environment. All right. um, they have regular and predictable patterns of eating, sleeping, and elimination. So they're they're easy to to manage and and pleasant to be around. So like you know, these are like happy babies. Okay, um, forty percent of their subjects were grouped as as being uh, having an easy temperament, uh, difficult temperament. Uh, is more negative overall mood, and they show a lot of frustration and intense responses. So you know, infants that that have like uh, a very vocal and, and uncontrollable crying fits, and um, they showed slow adaptation to change. They did not like new things in the environment, new people, or, or new or just new objects. Um, they, and they also demonstrate irregular patterns of eating, sleeping, and elimination. These babies are more likely to wake up the parents during the middle of the night at different times. Um, you couldn't count on them always eating or sleeping at the same time every day. Okay, so much more difficult uh, babies to, to manage. And then the last category is kind of in between a little bit. Um, and 15% um, of their subjects were grouped as being slow to warm up uh, babies. So they showed slow adaptation to new experiences and you know a, a moderate irregularity in eating, sleeping, and elimination. So slow adaptation to new experiences. I mean, they, if you kept, you know, um, if you gave them enough time and or you presented something new enough times, they would adapt to it. So they would kind of move from originally being a little bit more difficult 
you know, for something new, but they would adapt and, and, and move towards being more easy for that thing. So like the introducing them to a new sitter, you know, like the, the, a, new, a new person starts watching them or, or, you know, you, I don't know, you, you change where they're sleeping or you, you change the mobile even hanging over their crib or, you know, there's different changes that, the, that infants will respond to. Um, and so um, these uh, sort of warm ups, like I said, they're kind of in between categories. They, they initially appear more difficult in, but it, they will gradually uh, they will gradually warm up, okay, to to new new experiences. Okay, um, so as I told you, just to go over the percentages. Forty percent of their sample was easy, ten percent difficult, fifteen percent slow to warm up. Now, if you're if you have any math skills, you know that those numbers don't add up to a hundred. So you know about one third of their sample, thirty five percent, more specifically, they were left unclassified because they kind of had a mix of temperaments or, you know, displayed more than one style over time. So they wanted like babies that really represented these different categories um, to be included in, in their, in these particularly named profiles. Okay, so they wanted to see what's gonna to happen to these easy, difficult and slow to warm up temperament children as they grow up, um, you know, will their temperament change? Will it stay the same? Does an easy baby become an easy child and et cetera? Uh, and by the way, they, what they did find before I, I go on to the next slide is that, is that there is, um, it, there is certainly a lot of consistency in temperament throughout uh, the developmental years of uh, of childhood and and even into adolescence. I mean, like, so, you know, easy babies tended to become easy children and they were often easier teenagers and, and difficult babies were also difficult children. So you tend to get a continuation of, of temperament profiles or, or temperament styles. Um, they concluded that the temperament was, was biologically based you you know you're basically born with a certain temperament and and because it's based on biology and it's it's it doesn't really change very much through learning experiences. Oh yeah, and a somewhat newer model. There's been there's been other researchers since you know that groundbreaking Chess and Thomas work um, that have, have studied temperament and and developed newer models. And Rothbard is one. Um, in uh, Rothbard's model, temperament involves biologically based differences. So they agreed, I mean, Rothbard agreed that, you know, there are, that it starts with biology, that you are born with a certain temperament. And, but they said specifically, rather than these nine specific um, cat, you know, uh, behaviors or, or, or traits that that Chess and Thomas looked at, what Rothbard said was a, is a, it was about differences in reactivity. So reacting to, to stimulation and, stimul and stimuli in the environment, um, self and, and self-regulation, like how much can you control your emotion? So, you know, the idea that, that perhaps somebody that appears to be an easy baby, they're just really good at controlling emotions, you know, um, in, in regulating them. Um, these characteristics are influenced by experience, however, and can change over time. So into the Rothbard's model is built into the idea that it does start off biologically based, but, but you know, it, there is a, a nurture side to this, that environment and experience does affect your abilities in these areas. But once again, it's a slow process. You don't know, no baby changes overnight. It goes from being, let's say, from a difficult to an easy baby. Um, it just doesn't happen. Um, so as it says here, temperament tends to remain stable for most children, just like Chess and Thomas found. However, for some children, it does change, uh, but rarely between extremes. So it can shift. So it's like slow, but steady shifts. Like 
So if you have a difficult baby and you are very sensitive and uh, a sensitive caregiver and patient caregiver, and, and you know that, then over time you can transform that difficult baby to into you know a somewhat easier child. Um, you know, at least move them into the slow to warm up category, kind of, you know, like, you, so over, you know, there can be slow and steady progress in changing temperament. Um, um, in Rothbard's model, I, I kind of skip this section, this one line here. I mean, it, it's comprised of extroversion, three com major components, extroversion, negative emotionality or affect, uh, affect and self-regulation. We will be talking about self-regulation more in the next video. Um, it is a variable that becomes increasingly increasingly important as children get older. Um, those that have better self-regulation skills um, tend to do better in school, tend to do better socially. Um, and so we will look at that in the next video. And this concludes our brief look at temperament.